Resident Evil left the survival horror genre back on the GameCube after they released Resident Evil 4. Now they are in the far too common action horror genre, much to the displeasure of their fan base. The PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 were getting Resident Evil 5 back in 2009, but what would hold fans off until then? How about a spin-off on the Wii? Capcom knew that the Resident Evil 5 couldn't work on the Wii, so they commissioned a spin-off to take its place. This spin-off is known as the Umbrella Chronicles. Taking the form of a horror on-rail shooter, Umbrella Chronicles hoped to use what the Wii had going for it. Does the Umbrella Chronicles still make you take aim, or should you save your ammo? Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles decided to make a collection of previous games with its plot being the major events from Resident Evil, Resident Evil Zero, and Resident Evil 3. Nothing is told exactly the same due to the fact that the game is co-op the entire time, which is disappointing, but as you complete portions of the story, you unlock files to read that relate to the plots of each game. After certain parts, usually when you meet a non-player character, you'll unlock bonus chapters that are completely unique for this game. These chapters are enjoyable for fans, but the later ones can be pretty ridiculous. The gameplay here is what you'd expect from an on-rail shooter, both things added to extend its life as a retail console game. The game is set up into four parts, and each part is separated into chapters. In these chapters, you'll aim with your Wii mode and fire with the B button. Even though this is an on-rail shooter, it still requires a nunchuck as you can slightly pan your view with it. The C button also equips your knife, as does the A button and this is used to remove things from your screen such as the leeches in the zero segment and allows you to throw grenades with the B button. The Z button on the nunchuck switches weapons which can also be done with the D-pad on the Wiimote. Like all on-rail shooters, the enemies wander towards your screen and it's up to you to quickly shoot them dead and since you're fighting zombies, most of the time your target will be the head. Each enemy is a weak spot that causes you to do more damage, and each is shown by your cursor becoming a red circle. It usually only takes one critical hit to take down normal enemies, but it's sometimes the only way to damage bosses, and this can be annoying. As you progress through a chapter, you'll come to a single checkpoint, meaning that if you die, you'll start from there no matter what. You can collect items hidden throughout the environment by aiming at them and pressing the A button, and these range from the previously mentioned files to weapons. The files you find in the environment are displayed as umbrella logos and are usually found in objects in the environment. This gets extremely aggravating considering that means you need to blast everything in the chapter since almost every little thing is destructible. This is a really cheap way to get players to replay the game. At the end of each chapter you are graded and awarded stars. These stars are used to upgrade the weapons you found throughout the game and you can pick one weapon to take with you across all chapters. The weapons all have limited ammo, aside from the default handgun which is infinite, 
and it pools from character to character, meaning that no one character is better equipped than others. Every now and then you'll come across a quick time event that'll take health away if you fail. These really get in the way of gameplay and serve no real purpose, unlike the quick time event that happens when a zombie grabs you. Did any of that sound new? No? Well that's the game's biggest flaw, it's just a standard on rail shooter with collectibles and QTEs thrown in. Overall, the game is a rail shooter for better and for worse. The visuals in the game are pretty good, but that's a given considering the game isn't very interactive. The visuals are pretty comparable to the original N0 on GameCube, just slightly better. The enemy models look good as well, and plenty of the bosses make a return from their original games. The music is fine but forgettable since it tends to stay in the background, but fans will notice that pretty much everyone has got a new voice actor. Some are good and some just aren't. Overall, it's a Wii game, so it can't be held up very highly, but what's here is good for 2007. Overall, Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles was a serviceable rail shooter back in 2007, and it's held up rather well. It's not a big surprise considering the Wii Mode's pointer is perfect fit for the genre. That said, there is a lot of tedium to be found here. The gameplay is repetitive, finding the files is more a pain than fun, and the quick time events are rather obtrusive. Still, it's fun to play and it's fun to grab a friend and blast zombies like in the good old days. If you are a Resident Evil fan with a Wii, you should probably own this, and if you aren't a Resident Evil fan but you own a Wii, it's worth owning if you like rail shooters. The Resident Evil gang shoot themselves 3 out of 5 stars and a bronze shell trophy.